when I first saw this, I asked the question like, how has this never existed before now? Hello, welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV at Forest River today. I was invited down for an early look at the very first run prototypes of their new View series from Salem and Wildwood. And uh, this is something different and special. I have spent nearly 15 years of my life being a professional looker at her of campers. And I have seen the same thing done over and over again, repackaged with the word game changer slapped on the side of it. And it almost never is. It's almost always the same thing with just brand new look, same great taste kind of thing. They are actually from the ground up creating new floor plans the industry has never seen that that, that address the questions and the things that people have been wanting. Like people want maximum campsite window coverage. And frankly, they carried that through all the way up in even the bedroom. They wanted uh, more comfort in the bedroom. So they created like a power bed system so you can actually sit up at night and watch TV. This is prepped and ready for a combo or stackable washer dryer, which makes this big thing with no campsite slides and maximum patio space, what I want to refer to as a little bit of a portable park model, where it's certainly something that you could tote around, but if if you wanted to really just set up shop for a while, you got like a lake site or a mountain view or something like that, this would be absolutely awesome. Huge awning space because it's not fighting with a campsite slide. Awesome airflow through the thing. Uh, heated belly, available solar package. You can get this with a second air conditioner if you're so inclined. Um, there's the, the cool lounge in the back. It's just doing stuff that other things haven't. They, they kind of rethought the dining. A lot of people are moving away from the desire for a traditional booth dinette in a lot of RVs. So what they did is they basically kind of merged the island and a dining all together on this, which really speaks to me because like, you know, uh, at my, uh, my, my parents' house, that's, that's what they have. They have a gigantic oversized island that everybody eats at. But in the meantime, it lives up to the name, The View, because it's giving us looks that just nothing else does. And if you hear a little bit of background roaring like Katy Perry, that's because I am enjoying the rare luxury of actually recording an RV that's plugged in. And I got that air conditioner running because I am fat and it is hot. And I don't feel like sweating like crazy today where you gotta put the baby powder between your fat legs where they rub together. It looks like you got little silver dollar pancakes rolling down your pant legs. Just me, anybody else? All right, maybe, maybe I might be a little bit of an overshare, neither here nor there. But that's actually gonna benefit you in this video today because I got a lot to talk about. This is a very interesting RV. Now, if you're familiar with the Salem and Wildwood lineup, you might know a model called a 27RE. This basically is like two thirds of that same camper, but instead of a door side super slide with their Versa lounge in it, they shoved almost like a, sort of in a residential style, like sectional style uh, version of the Versa lounge all the way back here, and have kind of come up with a new style of rear living room. Now, I think I've seen a couple other brands kind of touch on notes like that before, but this over here, this ridiculous window coverage overlooking the campsite of your RV, totally unobstructed, all of it with uh, you know a patio awning over it. This is not something I've ever seen from any other manufacturer ever before. These things all open for just crazy, stupid airflow. Um, <laughs> the the big ones are they have the emergency escape window thing on them. It, I mean, yeah, you, you could. You could fit a sumo wrestler out of this thing in an emergency. Now, one of the cool things about this being still a stick-built camper is that they can put power outlets wherever they feel like it. And you've got household and USB outlets on both sides of this rear wall, kind of, uh, you know, sort of overlooking hanging out by the lounge, which I actually think is just absolutely fantastic positioning. Now, I really need to mention again, this is the very first view series prototype they ever made that we are actually standing in and recording right now today. So there are some things that have actually already changed. It, uh, you know, I almost released the videos of these views in reverse order of how they were created. So I, I know that's a little confusing that it feels like I'm working backwards in time, but I sort of wanted to show you the cool stuff first. But this is where it began right here. Now they don't include a TV from the factory, but you could mount yourself, I bet you put a 40 inch TV on that, I mean, easily. You got the electric space seat and Tootsie Toaster down below. 
Uh, with the little, you know what, that could be a small dog pooch palace or something like that, or a handy little shoe garage. Um, and this might be an industry first. I don't even think Salem and Wild would know they did it. They might be the very first stick and tin builder to do a floor flush kitchen slide like this. I've only seen this from a select number of higher dollar fifth wheel brands. That, that I, if they're not the first, I'm not aware of who else might have done it first. It's the first I've certainly seen it, but that's not to say that I, you know, I'm the only one that has the correct answers or anything. But look at this, back here in this rear lounge, you can just like, I mean, stretch out. You can, you can lay down so that you're overlooking the campsite of your RV over here. You can lay down so you're looking at the entertainment center. I mean, you could stretch out. You could have a bunch of people gathered around here. This is cool. This is different. I really, really like it. Now, it doesn't have a traditional recliner. You've got kind of that chaise lounge sort of thing going on right there. And it also does not have a traditional dinette. Instead, they really leveraged the kitchen island over here to be sort of a, uh, you know, a kitchen island dining bar, a dineland, if you will, with a five seat capacity, which, I mean, you don't have to have them all there. That could also be a heck of a little laptop warrior station. One of the things that's already changing on this and that you've already seen in the other view series that um, this, this radius wall that we're looking at right here, they were trying to go for some kind of cool statement wall, but it was all blending the same color. So they've actually repurposed that to, uh, it'll be covering the bathroom door. So the bathroom door have a bit of a radius. And again, if you want to see what I'm talking about on that, check the uh, the 28, or this is the 20, the 29 and the 24 view. I'm still learning these new view model numbers. But look what they did. They went straight symmetrical with the kitchen. The countertop space is incredible on this. The kitchen outlets are easy to reach for appliance time. This is, like at a glance, you walk in it and you almost go, okay, so it's got some campsite windows. But the more you dig into it, the more you see it really is something of a unique critter. I, I'm very excited about these. I really, really like them myself. Now, again, this is a variation of the Versa Lounge and uh, kind of as a signature calling card to that underneath of it, you've got all kinds of different storage space. But part of that is basically a jackknife sofa that can fold down. I think you could easily have two full grown adults on that thing without a problem because it goes wall to wall, basically. Um, the, uh, the, the entertainment center on this one is a big pantry. The other view models that you might have seen, those have like some kind of hidden bunkhouse or closet or office or something. This is really the first one and it's the, the only one currently that is really still truly designated as just a couple's model. This is a solo or couple's camper. Although with a big sleeper in the back and all the storage under it, what if you've got like a teenage kid? And, uh, you know, they, they maybe stay up late at night. Maybe, like, when I was a uh, teenage kid, I'd always sleep, in uh, like, on the sofa in the living room watching TV and fall asleep at night. I just always did that in the summertime. I thought it was fun. And now my bones hurt if I try to do that. And, dude, if I slept on the, uh, the, the couch overnight at this point, at my age, I wouldn't be able to turn my head left. I'd be cramped up so bad, I'd never be able to merge into traffic. I'd just floor it like SpongeBob and just be like, well, Jesus, take the wheel. Hopefully we get there. But when you were a kid, you could get away with that. So if you've got a, like a, uh, a teenager who won't be camping with you for very much longer because kids get older, they discover, um, you know, hormones and cars and they, you know, they don't hang out with mom and dad as often, typically. Well, maybe you skip the bunkhouse and you get something like this or one of the other view series and maybe that'll work for you. Now, again, this will have kind of that radius statement wall here coming into the bathroom. And being a full Salem Wildwood, it means we are six foot nine inside, which means you'll see that we get to stand in the shower very easily. Oops, I realized I forgot to capture you some footage. I forget that on these little kind of mini things. Now, let me ask you, you've got storage right there. I like the medicine cabinet. It is a full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror. But what if it was just a mirror and it pushed it back toward the wall a little bit, got it kind of out of the way and opened up that space? But then again, you still need a place to put towels. Although I think down there, that little slatted section wouldn't be too awful terrible for it. Uh, the toilet is on a, a aggressive angle, but I give them credit. So many manufacturers of a floor plane like this do not take into account elbow, hip, and shoulder room on the can, man. And obviously this group do. And again, being a taller ceiling, if you're over six foot like me, you're gonna be able to fit in there just fine. 
Now, uh, sliding our way back here, getting that bedroom door out of the way. Our command center is kind of all in one place here. If you get the solar option, the charge controller will also be located around this area. Your living room lights are actually are on a dimmer, although you gotta walk clear up here to the bedroom to do it, but uh, I guess it is sort of what it is. This is the controller for our tankless on-demand water heater. By the way, they weigh 60,000 BTUs on that. Some out there are only like 30, 35, 40,000 BTU. This means you could have a hot shower and screaming hot water coming out of the kitchen faucet at the same time. Um, these will be available in 50 amp service, which means you'll be able to add the second air conditioner like we're looking at right there. And I love how they went with, uh, you know, a fully enclosed storage over the bed instead of just a shelf. But I want to slide in here so that you can see the, uh, again, it's called the view for a reason. Even in the bedroom, you've got these two max size, what they call camping experience windows. Um, the idea being if you want to, you know, really be able to see outside and kind of be in the camping, even though you are kind of still sort of glamping a little bit, you can do all that right here. Um, you know, if you want to hear the crickets, you can do all that kind of fun stuff, just whatever works for you. And you may be noticing the new Versa Tilt bed, which if you want to pull that Olympic Queen size bed out of the way, Olympic Queen, by the way, 66 by 80. This is technically 66 by 78, but you could slot an Olympic Queen in there or a True Queen if you wanted. You could do that aftermarket too. But it pulls it out of the way so you can have some more comfortable nighttime viewing uh, with the TV hookup straight across from the bed or uh, you actually have room to get dressed, which I think is a, uh, a very cool thing. Now, looking around a little bit further over here, uh, let's actually start down in this area, which, which uh, they call their CPAP storage shelf uh, kind of system. Uh, that right there is designed, you know, you've got power outlets actually inside the cubbies. But what's also cool is if you're a little bit claustrophobic, it gives you a place to be able to, uh, you know, kind of put your face and not feel like you're enclosed in a box over there. It's also kind of a nice way to have some personal effects that are within reach, but also out of plain sight, which is a nice thing for some people to be able to enjoy. But what is quite a nice surprise, uh, pretty much any of the view series that they possibly can. By the way, let me back up so you can see. Yes, the TV hookups are located across from the bed. If I don't display them, someone's like, you were making it up. Well, I wasn't. But uh, around door number two, around the corner, this is going to be, because again, we're looking at prototype number one, e uh, either just a big closet space, or as you are seeing, you could do a combo or stackable washer dryer. So my idea, let me know what you think about this. I would kind of like there to be a hanging bar above, and then about two thirds of the way down, like shelf, shelf. And the shelves could be removed so that I could use it as storage, because I think most people are going to use it as storage. Now, some people might choose the combo or stackable washer dryer, but I think most people are going to use that as storage, but that's my nerdy little idea. What do you think about that? How would you like to see it arranged? I don't know. Anyway, moving on, I'm eyeballing it, and with nothing over here in the campsite, generally speaking, the road mode's going to seem pretty accessible. Um, ooh. The refrigerator, hmm. Yeah, crap, I was afraid of that. Because you've got this gigantic oversized kind of dining thing, which is a major focal point, and they're really focusing on destination use and not travel function on this, the fridge is gonna kind of be lost. Now that refrigerator has a reversible door, so in theory, you might be able to get a little bit of access to it if you flip the fridge to open the other way, but then when you're at your destination, it's gonna be weird. Anyway, what is neat though, Assuming you work around the refrigerator challenge, like let's say you just stop at McDonald's or something and you can park way out back, you've actually got a road function friendly little space here. Or, oh, this is cool. If you're gonna do a long trip, you can always get to the front bed and bathroom, but you can always, uh, you, you can't fold down that sofa section, but you've always got that extra long bed across the back that you could lay on too. So, you know, it, it doesn't provide all of the travel function that I would necessarily like, but it actually does a couple things for travel functions that some other RVs don't do. That's, that's interesting. Dude, you know what would be really cool? I don't know if they'll do it. I'm gonna suggest it. So over here on the, on the Dineland, they, they draped a big piece of that solid surface material to make it look really smexy right when you walk in. It's fixed though. What if that was on a hinge and the whole thing hinged up to create a redonkulous counter space and you could spread those stools out a little more? 
Like, I get that not everybody can be Brinkley, and, and Salem and Wild would try to be budget sensitive. What if they could do that? Would that be, would that be cool? Or that just be crazy? Man, what a beautiful day. I really, I was very fortunate, not only that they were kind enough to invite me down here, but uh, Mother Nature's just smiling upon me here. Now you may notice in the background some axles hanging back there. We're actually at the production facility where these are, you know, still being prototyped with this literally being the very first view model that they ever put together right here. Um, and uh, so, you know, you never know what you're gonna see in the background. <laughs> But it, it does all the things that you've expected from Salem and Wildwood. It just does all that and then some. Like the cool little dry erase board here. You've got the, uh, the laundry hamper going on. Now this model, the way that it lays out, it actually does not have a full pass through because the water heater and the furnace are, they kind of have to be shoved over there under the bed cavity. I would sort of like them to be somewhere else, but there's really nowhere else for them to be. Uh, because, you know, if you tried to put them in the closet out of the way, well, then you'd lose your stackable washer dryer capability. So it's like that it is kind of one of those things where just the way this one lays out with all the windows and the slide positioning and everything, it does not have a full pass there. It's a rare find from this family. But look at that awning. That is so big. It actually has a center arm support on it. And notice how the, the entry door could swing open and still clear the awning arm. So if it gets caught by the wind, even though it's an anti-slam, if you boot kick it like Dog the Bounty Hunter, uh, well, it's not gonna smash the arm. But maximum campsite window coverage here. And look where they put the outside speakers. If you're gonna do it, that's the way to do it. Put them down low so you can hear them instead of blowing away the neighbors. That is my personal feeling on the best way to accomplish that. Now over here, you've got the uh, Salem and Wildwood has been the best for years, actually, in the, in the world of stick and tin campers at providing better stability at your campsite. And they've updated this year to the new LCI uh, quick drop stabilizer. And those things are, are they, they absolutely uh, are, they live up to the hype is the best I can say. Now. Their sectionalized heated underbelly is still sectionalized and heated. You can see one of the seams right there. It's kind of easy to miss. Some people, uh, they, they change the skin material because in some really cold areas, the ABS hard shell plastic they were using could theoretically crack if somebody overstressed the screws a little bit, which would be a problem. Now, if you notice on the back here, way up at the top above that window, you do have that uh, prep mount there for a telescopic removable ladder. The ladder is not included with the RV, so that will be something you wanna keep in mind. And we're looking at a Salem today, but Forest River Wildwood is literally the exact same thing. There's always some clown that works at some place who wants to try to tell you that uh, the one that they sell is the better one. Well. We sell both. Bishop's RV sells both Salem and Wildwood. So I can just, I can be brutally honest about this. They are the same thing made by the same people. They have different stickers on the outside and that is quite literally the only difference between them. Now, something I thought was kind of cool. A lot of your view models have rear kitchens, but this is more of a new style of rear living room. And what that allowed them to do is put the kitchen and the bathroom kind of close together. And it looks like a little bit of a plumbing nightmare and I hope they maybe clean that up a little bit, but it actually does have a single sewer outlet. Now you're going, no it doesn't. I can see two of them pretty clearly. Your kitchen and your bathroom all exhaust out of the thing on the right hand side. What we're looking at over here on the left is a direct drain from the washer dryer hookups. It does not have a gray tank dedicated to the washer dryer hookups. So if you're going to use the washer dryer, you're probably going to uh, want to get some kind of Y splitter and you're going to benefit a lot from having on-site sewer because I don't think there's a, you know, a blue tote honey wagon tank big enough to be able to handle uh, a water load like that. Um, I suspect the, the washer dryer hookups, uh, they're like a microwave in a hotel room. A lot of people say they want a microwave in a hotel room, but they very rarely actually use it. Washer dryer hookups in the RV are, are the same way. 98% uh, of the washer dryer prepped RVs never have a washer dryer installed in them. And uh, only about half the people that actually install one end up being pretty glad they ever did. Now, that does mean there's some people like, oh, dude, I love my washer and dryer. I totally get that, I respect that. You should keep on keeping on like Joe Dirt would say. But you know, statistically, everything I just said is the case, even though some people just can't even imagine that being case. That is how the cookie crumbles. And I am right next to a swamp ditch and nearly just slid down in that sucker. Yeah, this is what I was talking about over here. Hey, look, baby corn dogs. I mean, look at that. How often do you get a chance to see an organic baby corn dog? 
But as my friend Andy Dufresne would come to tell you, it was not a corn dog. It was a decision he would soon come to regret. So I hope you like the action today. Uh, this is the third of the view models that I've had the opportunity to record so far here. And they all, they, they, they focus on that, you know, campsite window coverage. They have that common thread that binds them but they all have their own different unique spin and flair. Like this is the, the one that you could say is truly a couples model. The others have some variety of potential bunk function or bunction, if you will. Uh, I, I, if you haven't seen those, I'd, I'll leave some links in the video description. Check those things out. I would love to see what you think. And at the time this video comes out, these are brand new prototypes. We probably don't even have them on our website. So uh, if you check the links in the video description or scan this QR code right away when the video comes out, it will probably come up empty. Uh, I, I don't know what these things are running at the time of this recording, but our local folks, if we are sold out or if uh, they haven't come out yet, can get you those answers. I just wanted to get down here and get you that early footage. And if you appreciate the extra effort getting away, for, you know, even taking a day away from my family to come down here, please hit that subscribe button, like our video, uh, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about this one. And remember, this was the very first prototype. Some things have already updated and taken place, which again, if you check those other videos, you'll get a, a sense of some of that. And remember, when you're ready, we're ready. And in the meantime, doing our best to always hear it first here, folks. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.